Knowing when to charge ahead with the A pawn or the H pawn is a good thing to know. That's uh, that's today's topic of uh, GM talks. Learning when to charge ahead and maybe when not to, and uh, what do you try to accomplish. Uh, it is uh, well sort of a trend, uh, especially due to Alpha Zero to get that A pawn or H pawn going and push it as far as possible. Um, in this game from today, uh, today we were gonna see uh, White do that at the exact uh, right moment, and we're gonna talk a little bit about when that moment arrives. Um, it's from the Bundesliga in 2005. I'm White against uh, Grandmaster Christian Gabriel, uh, who is a strong Grandmaster, uh, or at least he was. Uh, I start with, with E4, and we have uh, Rai Lopez on Spanish opening, and he has been playing this his whole life. I played this uh, D3. It's trying to get out of theory. I was um, I was copying at the time. I remember I was copying Akub Jan, who had uh, very good results with White in in this uh, variation. Uh, it has some ideas, and and lately. I think it's especially 63 is very popular, and I think uh, the Swedish guy Grandelius uh, has just released a chessable course on uh, on the Spanish where he recommend this D3 or 63. The the trick with 63 is that Black has already put this bishop on E7, but uh, also you allow the open Spanish, which is a series open. Here, uh, this move, d6, contains a positional threat that's very important to notice in the, the Rai Lopez. If white makes a mistake here and castle, say like this, black will trap uh, the white squared bishop with, with these uh, moves. And this bishop, this guy here, is very important. Don't lose this guy. He's strong. He's, uh, he's uh, the, the, the reason the Spanish opening is so strong is that when, whenever this bishop becomes good, it becomes very good. It attacks uh, in general f7 or h7 and it uh, defends uh, e4 and, and helps uh, in the center. It can also attack on b5. So it's, it's in general a very good bishop and it's definitely better than the knight on c6 that is actually slightly misplaced because it's blocking the C pawn. So here, a very important move is to play C3, giving an escape square for the bishop. G6 makes a lot of sense, and this is also what I have been playing with when I've been black in this position. You are simply getting uh, the bishop to G7 immediately without uh, putting it on E7 first, and then play rook E8 and bishop F8 and G6 and bishop G7. So you're saving a ton of tempo, tempis. And I think this, in general, equalizes for black but it's just a position and uh, you could go to b3 but that just uh, make room for this move and the thing is this knight is the only reason white's position makes sense it is a bit clumsy on c6 and often black will have to uh, maneuver with it to to get it to a meaningful post and it's not so easy and it will it will cost some tempi uh, because it's not good here because it blocks this pawn on c7 and it's also blocking a potential counterplay on uh oops i did i do that a lot actually here um bishop d7 all normal castle castle rugi one uh over protecting the the e4 square so we are ready for d4 bishop b7 uh a4 this um can be a bit of a nuisance for uh for, for black to defend, it's not so easy to defend uh, this pawn always. So it makes sense, and also white gives gets the option of sometimes opening the a file. Queen d7, all natural moves. Uh, I think Carlson recently played this move, uh, and it's of course a, a nice move. It does create what we call um, connection between the rooks, which makes black fully mobilized now. Black uh, White continues with his uh, normal move, Rook Fe8, and um, and here I decided to to embark on a slightly different plan than is is usual. I played B4. Um, 
the idea is that if black goes uh, d5, which is is looks like the natural way of counterplay for black, especially since he put his rook here, so f5 is not really on the cards at the moment, uh, then he will weaken this square here. So d5 weakens um, the c5 square, and this knight was staying on b uh, d2, yeah, and another a typical Spanish maneuver would be to do this, but it's sometimes it's going to b3 and I can play on the queen side. And he played knight d8, and we saw that earlier that you want to relocate the knight, and in general it's considered that this square is good. The problem with this square, the, of course it's nice that it controls a lot of important squares, but it also weakens uh, the defense of e5 and, and can be a little bit clumsy, so it's not so easy. I play knight here, uh, preventing c5, I'm not sure c5 was a threat, uh, but also d5 looks uh, very unappetizing uh, here. Rook c8, maybe threatening c5 again, could be, preventing that as well. I'll notice it's nice that, that this move is not uh, possible at the moment. Black basically mostly only have one plan, and that is to push d5, and this is in general, in this kind of slow Spanish position, this is what black is aiming for. Getting that pawn to d5 and he equalizes. But with the knight here, this pawn is no longer protected, so it's not uh, going there anytime soon. And I think this was probably uh, wrong. Uh, I think he should have played maybe uh, something with the queen or something, starting to defend this and preparing d5. Because here, I get a slight initiative. Uh, it's it's already a bit annoying. He didn't want to uh, to to play rook c8, so he has to move the rook bishop somewhere, and and maybe it should just go uh, to this square here would be better because he went here and and I managed to get my knight here, um, which is is kind of nice. Um, and I I think he decided that it was not really a problem. The thing is, if he goes back here, then white does get some pressure due to the, the annoying uh, idea of bishop a4. So it's it's not so easy. He went rook a8 and I managed to exchange the bishop and bishops are slightly better than knights. Just slightly better. Not not much, but, uh, but in this kind of position they are slightly, but clearly better. The, the annoying thing is, of course, I had to exchange rook, and he will get uh, activity on the queen side, but maybe it's not so dangerous. Uh, queen b1, I'm overprotecting uh, here. He gets to play d5, but without the white squared bishop, it's not as uh, as good a thing as it was before, and this, this bishop down here is not doing much at the moment. I move this bishop, iring this square here. He has to defend. Bishop goes into the diagonal, and it has no um, opponents at the moment. In general, black would love to oppose this bishop, either kick it with the knight or oppose it. But here, he just have to to do this. And I'm, but white's uh, objective here is obvious. He, this will have to be good. Black's plan is, is very simple. Fortify uh, b8 and move the knight to b6 and maybe take a knight c4 or maybe something like c5 and, and with, with, with decent play. So I take take and c4. And, uh, and this is kind of uh, annoying for black because now the, the white squares are going and he doesn't have a white squared bishop. So and here we come to um, a crucial point in the in the game. Let's sum up what's going on here. White does have the bishop pair. This bishop here is really, really strong. And it doesn't have an opponent, and it can't be opposed, which is Beck's big problem. Uh, Black doesn't have any active plan besides just defending uh, things and trying not to uh, get into trouble. Uh, but what about white? What should white do here? How to get going? Well, the pressure on e5 is of course a little bit annoying, but it's hard to increase the pressure. 
and uh, especially since I have two attacking and he has already three defending so I need four taggers and how I'm gonna achieve that but we also see that even though black has pieces near his king it does look a little bit vulnerable especially this square uh, looks like a nice place to attack um, so this should give you a, an idea that maybe we could weaken his position uh, somewhat if we could for instance if we could uh, make a knight stable on g5 it would be really annoying for him so um, what about h4 and um, and suddenly i'm maybe also threatening sometimes this move so uh, but h4 is really strong here because his position is is lacking uh, harmony and it's what to do about the potential threat of h5 and taking and then a knight could settle here i might also like alpha zero go all the way to uh, to h6 and box his king we'll make that red uh, in here because the king is in trouble he, he didn't he was using a lot of time and i think he, he felt that it was slightly unfair that he was getting into trouble in in, in this kind of position he, he he fortified the knight on uh, on d5 but and the pawn went up and he realized here that he's not going to get any counterplay anywhere so white's idea is simply take take knight here then queen here queen somewhere maybe here and and attacking f7 and later maybe even f7 h7 so black is in in in, in some sort of trouble doesn't have any counterplay the the this pawn's advance really uh, is a problem here sometimes it makes no sense to to move the pawn forward but here it definitely does and and he, he decided to say, okay, <laughs> I'm winning a pawn. <laughs> but of course that weakens a lot of squares, uh, especially uh, this square. Uh, but it, it also uh, makes room to attack maybe here. So I'm, I'm immediately charging in and I'm already threatening this move with a nasty, nasty attack. So he has to kick the knight goes here and due to the knight left here it has a good square here on um, on e4 get the rook up he's trying to put it on this square to both maybe get some sort of uh, attack going here um, but also to fortify the the king side but black is already in serious trouble white is coming the white squared bishop here is a monster and this is typical for the bishop pair that it's very hard to uh, to do something about it when 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 they're really working the bishops uh, because if you if you sw sort of close down one of the bishops the other one will spring to life he's proposing uh keep on to the pawn here sake c5 uh nice c5 I, I and i kind of like that uh it's defended i don't know why but it's nice when you have defended pieces rook here rook e4 and notice he has the problem that this square is under white control and the white squares are permanently uh, destroyed and black has weaknesses of course this pawn is, is falling but but these two pawns are also weak and in general the king here is weak and I don't think it had to ha end this this fast, but of course, uh, White is, um, is is in the driver's seat. He he hastens the end with f5. Looks like like you're getting rid of weakness and you're sort of attacking or, or something like that. But but in, and uh, but in general, you're just weakening the position. Um, the rook is now not covered. Uh, the the e6 square is 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 no longer. So I just moved the rook, threatening to take. The, the, the trick was, of course, I couldn't take because the rook was hanging. So that would have been a big mistake. So just moving the rook. And here I use the rule uh, of, of placing pieces on the same color as, as the opponent kings. It's a general good rule. Queen c8. And I'm just sort of getting ready to, to, to get the, the pawn going. f4 weakens the pawn even more and putting it on the same square as this bishop. This is 
Oops. Ugh. Let's make it green. Uh, is on all these black squares, and it's well. So what to do here? Has to open up the position, threatening this very unpleasant move. Rook d5. The queen goes in, and of course everything is is falling now. This is threatening. Oops, sorry. This happens here. There is no uh, attack at all. Uh, I'm also threatening uh, this move. And for instance, if he goes to g4 with the queen, I just give a check and play queen e8 check, and he will he will lose something. He will be mated, I think. Knight f6, and coming in, attacking the rook here. And here, it's defending the knight, but the problem is, is this move, and here, uh, black resigned. And this was a very typical example of you black in this position where white had everything but not a clear plan. That's when you should think about using your H or A pawn to make small, uh, some, some, for some concession, put more pressure on the opponent. And um, I think this was a pretty good example. By the way, Ben Larsen was very famous for this, but nowadays it's more Alpha Zero that's uh, that's credited with uh, just charging the H pawn in uh, in any position. And even uh, well, uh, 20 years ago they started charging the G pawn. I never liked that actually. It weakens the position too much. But the H and A pawn doesn't weaken that much. It's sort of your the rest of your structure stay compact, which is nice. Um, this was GM Talks. Uh, thank you for watching.